Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. We're not going to call to order just yet. We have a minute or so. Oh, we are now. We're at 1.30. going to call our regular council meeting of Tuesday, August 22nd, 2023 to order. Um, Mr. Coleman, we have an agenda before us. Any changes from administration? Uh, Madam Chair, no additions or deletions from administration today. Thank you very much. Look for someone to move as presented. Councillor Belazer will move as presented. All in favor? That is unanimous. We have uh, minutes of our July 11th, 2023 regular council meeting. Looking for someone to move those. Councillor Verdi, thank you very much. Any comments, questions, changes, errors or omissions? I am seeing none. All in favor? That is unanimous. At the beginning of every council meeting, we have an opportunity for anybody in, in the chambers who'd like to make a presentation to council on an item not on the agenda can do so now. Anybody wishing to make a presentation? All right, we usually don't have quite a full house, so that's a good thing. So <laughs> on to some staff introductions. Uh, we have the chief and Mr. Bain doing some new staff members. So I'll just meet you over there. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to introduce Dennis Osborne. Uh, thanks, Renee. Uh, Dennis is our new uh, plumbing and gas uh, safety codes officer in our safety codes group in planning and development. Um, Dennis came to us from the inspections group, so he's worked in the private sector for the uh, past nine years or so, um, doing inspections in the city of Edmonton and around the region. And he was doing all the plumbing and gas inspections for U of A. Uh, did inspections on food trucks. Uh, he trained uh, a lot of the SEOs coming into their organization as well. So we're very lucky to have Dennis on our team. Dennis started with us on July the 19th, uh, sorry, July the 11th. Uh, and he's been learning. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so he's been learning our processes and our systems uh, internal to the county. We're very happy to have Dennis here. And just some of the things that he'll be doing, um, he'll be working obviously with our customers and safety codes. Um, builders and owners and responding to inquiries, receiving permit applications, uh, issuing permits, doing inspections, writing reports, all the things that our awesome SCOs do. So uh, please join me in welcoming Dennis to the team. Welcome, Dennis. Come on over. Congratulations. That's been for a long time. And we'll keep you busy. And over Thank you. And many years. Yes. <laughs> Madam Mayor and Council, I'm here today with Shelly Miller, one of our new platoon chiefs that started on July 15th. Uh, the platoon chiefs did a three week pretty intensive onboarding. They're on shift now, so I can't introduce the, the other two new platoon chiefs as they're uh, off right now, but uh, as one, one of these days when they're on shift, I'll bring them in. Uh, Shelly actually joined uh, New Sarepta in 1992. I don't ask her age, but she joined in 1992. So she's got brings decades of experience with her uh, with with Ludo County, and we're happy to see her in a full time capacity as platoon chief. So, welcome. And look, she's even got a radio. She's great. Well, don't call. And congratulations again on your <laughs> We're going to move into a few uh important service and works. And if we use the hospital, we're going to get to one. So I want to thank Karen Bernand, our manager of assessment for five years of service with Ladue County. In her role, Karen is responsible for the oversight and leadership of the assessment team and declaring Ladue County's assessment role on an annual basis. This is not an easy task given our assessment complexity, which ranges from residential lake properties to a business park and large industry. Karen is the president of the Alberta Assessors Association and is actively involved in her profession and is knowledgeable about ongoing assessment matters, such as the province's assessment model reviews. She is a valuable member of our senior management team, and she brings thoughtful contributions and insights to our many discussions and decisions. 
Last year, she took on additional responsibilities and took on land management portfolio. She has compiled important information on county-owned land and is currently working on a land management strategy for the organization. It is a pleasure working with you, Karen. Congratulations, and thank you for your five years of service with Leduc County. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, it is my pleasure to uh, be here today to, to recognize Fred Carew um, for five years of service as a heavy equipment operator with Leduc County. Uh, Fred Carew is one of eight of our heavy equipment operators. Um, so he, he is one of the eight individuals who is in the plow truck from all hours of the night um, and into the day. Freddie is an exceptional uh, member of our team, brings positivity and humor to our collective group, um, is very quick-witted. We enjoy that in, in our group. Um, Fred has ran everything from our tandem trucks to our plow trucks to our excavator, uh, spends a lot of time in our mulcher on our right-of-ways. Often when you see our mulcher up and down the road, it's this guy who's operating it. Um, very, very competent operator, great personality to have, great teammate for Leduc County, and I just wanted to recognize Fred on five years of service today. Ready, hold on. Congratulations and uh, thank you for all the work you do to keep the government safe. Who finds one more award? Yes. Hi. <laughs> Right. Wonderful. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Mayor and Council, and thank you very much for having me here today. Uh, I have the pleasure of presenting this uh, program to you all as admin as well as Council. Uh, this is one of my favorites uh, to bring to you each season, and that is our Star Awards presentation. So this is an opportunity for us to recognize some outstanding young people in our county, and uh, they take part in our programs and our activities and our events. And it is uh, one of those things where I get to invite all these lovely people behind me who help support them as well. So. Yes. Yeah. So uh, that being said, these are our Star Award recipients for the 2023 season. And we can give them a round of applause. <laughs> so uh, these young people are uh, chosen by our re recreation staff. Uh, they take part in special day camps, trips, or drop-in programs. Our Star Awards are presented to participants who demonstrate outstanding leadership skills. They're kind, they're generous, they're helpful, and they're intelligent. Uh, they've made each camp or event better by attending, and we want to thank them for their contributions. We also want to thank their families for supporting them and giving them the opportunity to spend time with us this, uh, this summer and this season. Uh, after the presentation here, we're going to take them over to the NISCU Inn and we're going to celebrate them with their each, they each get a certificate. Uh, each one of our recreation staff says something fabulous about them, so that's nice to see. Lots of pictures and videos will be taken and snacks will be had, so it'll be a fantastic celebration. Um, and at this time, I'd welcome the mayor or council to give any comments or ask any questions, and we would love to have a picture after as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you very much for that. And on behalf of, geez, it looks different on the side. <laughs> and on behalf of council, um, to all of you, thank you. Thank you for making our Parks and Rec programs a success, for being that kind face for someone who might be a little bit shy, for showing other children how to play and how to interact. We really appreciate it. 
And I know that you will have a great time with your families after um, our presentation or our uh, talk today. But what we wanna do is we wanna have council and all of us come here into the middle and we'll get a great big picture of you with council. And it'll be your first picture before you become maybe the next premier or prime minister or something like that that shows your leadership. So thank you very, very much. Come on in the middle, everyone, and let's find a way to get everybody in a big picture. Yeah. You're welcome to join. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We'll just say you're welcome. <laughs> 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 yeah, sorry, you guys could yeah. um, excuse myself. Probably most of the hundred percent always do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's so good. Yeah, you too. Thank you to all the parents and grandparents and uncles and aunts who came out today to celebrate. It really shows community and we really appreciate that. Thank you. you get your ice cream later, Council. All right. Moving on to number 5A. Um, one, two, and three belong to Mr. Honesty. So whenever you're ready, sir, the floor is yours. Thank you. So I should have timed that a little differently with uh, the fun stuff. And then we get down to business right away yeah, with my item. Hey? How you are, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's a reminder of why we spend the money the, for the good stuff. Absolutely. So that's, that's the key tie in. Yep. Uh, the first item is uh, uh, final payment for 2021 for the town of Thorsby. This is part of our cost sharing program. We've been working with the town for the last few years as they um, faced some changes administratively, uh, which led to some delays in them submitting their, uh, their payments and their audited statements to us. So we received the 2021 audit on July 4th, 2023. Typically, we would receive it in the spring of 2022 after they've completed their 2021 audit. Um, we had previously not accepted a budget from the town. Uh, because we had concerns at that time, but those have all been addressed and uh, any questions I've had have been answered. Uh, the contribution is lower than previous years, obviously, because it, we were still in the pandemic and several services uh, were cancelled or um, not provided uh, throughout the year. So our total payment to the Town of Thorsby for 2021 is 189.690. All right, questions for Mr. Honesty? Councillor Lewis? Uh, no questions, just a comment. Uh, appreciate your diligence in making sure that you are holding them accountable to what we pay them as our fair share. So um, great news for our county. We have people that are watching every dollar that we spend. So I'd be happy to move the recommendation as well. Okay, uh, do you, okay. Um, 
Councillor Lewis will, will move. And then do you have a comment after? I have a comment too. Okay. Uh, I, I appreciate your due diligence. Mr. Dean. It, it's, uh, it's been a long haul. And, and I know we've been working with this for quite some time. And I'm glad to see that you got it straightened out. I know the administration they have now is, is a good one or very good that's uh, willing to work with us. So thank you, like Kelly said, for your hard work on that. Thank you. Councilor Lewis, would you like to move the two recommendations into record, please? Absolutely. Uh, number one, that council accepts the 2021 audited statement from the town of Thorsby for cost shared recreational library services. And number two, that council forward a final payment for the 2021 recreation library cost share in the amount of $189,690 to the town of Thorsby. Okay, uh, the motion is on the floor. <clears throat> Any debate on the motion? I am seeing no hands, all in favor. That is unanimous. 5A2, Mr. Honesty. Thank you. Uh, 2022, we also have their audited statement. Uh, we had previously approved a budget and this is in line or, or under what they had previously anticipated. Uh, there is variance in their budget, uh, largely due to the fact that for the 2020, 2021 season, there were closures and, and they weren't really sure on what some of their true costs would be. So that, that was anticipated and, and we did work with them on that. And as they get to more consistent programming, consistent services, that should uh, align a little better. Um, they also uh, made an adjustment, but we did communicate that to me to their capital program. They did spend a little bit more, more funds on their upper viewing area, but then did uh, delete a couple programs just to make sure they stayed within budget there. And that's something I supported. The upper viewing area is now um, complete and a usable rental space for them. So uh, it was a good decision in the end. Our final contribution payment uh, to the town is 117,220. Thank you very much. Any questions for Mr. Honesty or comments? I'm seeing none. Would you like to make them? Okay, okay, okay. You, just your microphone, uh, Councilor Scully, thank you. Yeah, I would move that recommendation that council accepts the 2022 audited statement from the town of Thorsby for cost shared recreation and library services. And two, that the council forward the final payment for the 22, 2022 recreation and library cost share in the amount of $117,220 to the town of Thorsby. Okay, thank you. Any debate on the motion? I'm seeing none, all in favor? Unanimous. Uh, 5A3. Yeah, 2023, so this is their uh, 2023 budget um, that is in line. They continue to um, invest more as they um, are more successful. They, they are committing more to the programs that they offer within the facility, and we've seen some of that benefit already. Uh, it is a more active uh, recreation facility. And they have also renewed some of their funding that had previously been cut from library services. So they're trying to get back on track with um, that support to their library, which is also a very successful library. I think the one statement I would make here is that potentially they're budgeting a little bit conservatively when it comes to arena revenues. Uh, and I anticipate when we see the actuals that those will be higher than what they had budget just based on what they've experienced in the last year or so. Um, and as well, they continue to commit to capital projects. The one thing I wanted to point out, um, I'm supporting and recommending support for the playground sand. Typically, we don't fund playgrounds. Uh, this specific playground is directly outside of the rec center, used regularly by our residents, and is um, a part of a maintenance upgrade that I would think uh, I would recommend that we support uh, due to where it is located. So, um, but they are committing and investing in upgrades to the facility as well, which is something that I've supported. Thank you, any questions? I have a question, uh, Mr. Honesty. I see that the difference in utilities between 2022 and 2023 is 1200 or so dollars. Is that a reason, are they very energy efficient? Um, or is that, might we expect a larger swing there? No, and that's just their budget from okay. 2022. So I did not compare. Uh, the 2020. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Um, yeah, it was it was 139 actual. Okay, so um, it's not so far off. So it's it's not, but uh, obviously they they keep 
to try to be as efficient as possible with such a large building, which is not easy. So, but I know that with the change to even LED lights and things like that, that a lot of our partners have done, it makes a big difference. It does help. Consumption. Okay. Any other questions on the 2023 budget for Thorsby? Seeing none. Councillor Belazer, did you want to move that one? Certainly, I could move that. Move the recommendation that the Council approved the 2023 budget from the Town of Thorsby for the cost shared recreation and library services. The Council forward a budget payment for 2023 recreation and library cost share in the amount of $252,960 to the Town of Thorsby. Thank you very much. Councillor Smith. Um, again, I just want to make a comment. You've worked hard to get this together, but I also want to commend our regional partner, Thorsby, for actually bringing this in. Uh, and again, Dean, thank you for jumping in and putting sand in the playground. It benefits our kids. It benefits the communities that we visit. So it's nice to see Thorsby is up uh, on track. So uh, kudos to them for being uh I guess getting getting back on track through COVID and everything. And again, part of our strategic plan is the communities and allowing our residents to go in. So very happy to support all three of these motions today, as well as uh, Dean helping a regional partner to be as strong as it can be. Thank you. Well said. Any other comments, debate? All in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. On to 5B1, Ms. Bernand starting into year six now. So ready, starting out with a bang here. Uh, land sale of Leduc County property. The floor is yours when you're ready. Thank you, Mayor DeBlanco, Council Administration. So the report before you is for Council to consider and approve the disposal of plan 4629 block BG lot A. The roll number is there, it's located at five 006 Center Avenue, New Sarepta. A uh, map is on page two of the report for you to visualize where we're talking about. Um, so for council to approve the sale of this property for fair market value by means of a seal bid, the proceeds of which will be allocated to capital asset life cycle management land management reserve. There have been some various inquiries regarding Leduc County's interest in selling this parcel. One interested purchaser wishes to develop the property with a commercial building and business venture, which would utilize this property to its highest and best use. The commercial development would be a benefit to the community of New Sarepta as well. As an aside, um, Last Friday, after the agenda had been completed and circulated, I did receive a offer to purchase from an interested individual. Background on this lot is in 2007, the village of New Sarepta acquired this property as a gift. The intention at that time was for the property to be utilized as a senior center and municipal library. And the construction of the facility needed to be completed by 2011. The village of New Sarepta was not able to secure the means and resources for this plan to come to fruition and the 2011 deadline uh, came without any project progress. In 2010, the village did dissolve and become a hamlet of Leduc County. The property has sat virtually um, unutilized since 2007. The improvements have deteriorated to the point of requiring demolition. Leduc County conducted a hazardous material and environmental assessment property. A 2018 pre-demolition hazardous material assessment of the improvements was, was completed. The report confirmed the presence of asbestos and lead paint and some old tires, oil drums, and miscellaneous chemical containers. A limited phase two environmental site analysis was completed in 2020. The report indicated that no exceedance of any of the applicable regulatory guidelines were detected in any of the analyzed soil or ground, groundwater samples. No further environmental assessment of the property was recommended for 2020. Legal counsel has reviewed all of the documents uh, for the uh, hazardous material and environmental assessment and it, they have provided the opinion that Leduc County can consider the sale of the property with the appropriate disclosures. 
County policy CM07 outlines the disposal process for county owned land. Market value defined as the amount that a property might be expected to realize if sold on an open market by a willing seller to a willing buyer after a reasonable amount of exposure in the open market. According to CM07, council will approve the manner in which the land will be disposed, real estate listing, competitive bid, public auction, or private party negotiation negotiated. The um, recommendation is to utilize a competitive bid process. Considering that Leduc County has received multiple inquiries on this property, it is appropriate that this property publicly be advertised for property for sale and a sealed competitive bid process is a transparent and fair procedure for this transaction to allow any and all interested purchasers an, an opportunity to purchase the property. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Bernan, should this recommended uh, recommendation for uh, the sealed bid process be put forward. How long until, how long from the beginning of the advertisement till we open the bid does it take? I consider at least four weeks in in the market being a reasonable amount of exposure. Okay, thank you. Any other questions at this time, Councillor Smith? I think Council was aware that twenty thousand dollars was allocated several years ago to Parks and Rec to decommission, decontaminate the two sites that were there. Um, after, I, I believe, and we do have Dean in uh, in gallery today, I, I believe looked into the cost and I assume it's a lot more than that. Through the chair uh, to the county manager, uh, can you give us just a little bit of background on those buildings and if you can perceived costs that, uh, and would that be something that the seller uh, would be willing to assume the cleanup within that uh, bid that we currently have. Yeah, Madam Chair, members of council, I, I couldn't give you numbers off the top of my head, but um, there are several uh, items that need to be addressed uh, for cleanup. Uh, the assumption would be that uh, any prospective buyer would be responsible for that cost. Um, we had brought forward a budget item a couple of years ago, but it uh, it pulled together a number of cleanup uh, property so I don't have the number off the top of my head I don't know if Renee can remember or not but uh, we'd have to get that information and get it back to you if I could just follow up so your assumption would be that the purchaser would then in fact uh, properly clean up the two older historic buildings that remain yeah that's correct is it uh, and again I'm just looking for process um, through the summertime, there's been a lot of action in New Sarepta on this property, on the property beside the village office and also a rec property going forward. The, the people that are looking, uh, again, we talked about a high value business being in doctor's office, uh, being a drugstore and senior housing. Um, talking to the person that has brought them in, they would like to get into the ground and actually start construction because Ladue County said that they can get them a permit in a week. So that's what they were looking at doing. And I know a sealed bid is there, but the property, again, if I can look at it, has been sitting uh, with no interest since um, two thousand and seven. So we do have a buyer. We do have an offer. Um, other people could have stepped forward. Uh, I, I would hope we could at least debate the fact of um, not going into a sealed bid and delaying the developer for four weeks, but entering into negotiations, uh, administration entering into negotiations to finalize the deal and start the project, which again is one of the biggest goals that we've had in New Sarepta. This is that development that we've all looked for to kickstart, um, to cover off all of the infrastructure money that we put into this growth hamlet. So I guess it's just um, I, I would like to, to you know, let us consider administration negotiating with the current bid that's in uh, and that buyer and mo moving this project forward. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess back to administration. Um, under implications in our report, it says there's been various inquiries. So we're at a situation where we have more than one interested party. Is that correct? 
Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I hesitate only because I have heard uh, of the other interested parties more by word of mouth okay, and not in um, them speaking directly with me. But I do understand that there have been some okay. no, just, inquiries. Just wondering, uh, did you have your hand up? I did not. Okay, sorry. Um, Mr. Coleman, just before I go back to you, um, our policy currently talks about the sealed bid process. Um, what are the potential downfalls should we not follow our policy or create uh, suggest as Councillor Smith is doing? Madam Chair, members of council, the policy allows uh, council to authorize us to uh, proceed with a private party negotiated offer, um, which we've done in the past. Uh, depends on the number of interested parties. Um, as Ms. Bernand has said, you know, we've heard secondhand, but we haven't had any formal. We have not. It had to be uh, where we do actually have an official uh, offer uh, from one individual. Um, but council does have the prerogative of of uh, asking administration to proceed with a private party negotiated uh, deal if if that is the will of council. So we're, we're within policy. There is no risk uh, to. Thank you. Process. Nope. Appreciate that. Councillor Smith, did you want to put a, a replacement motion on the table? I will. If I could just make a comment, of course, um, being a liaison and being the councillor out there, people have approached me and asked me, which I've uh, tried to direct them to administration for the proper process, putting in their bid. At this point, only one person has followed my advice to uh, to engage administration. So one person had approached me. Um, and this bid had approached that person to buy their land to make a parking lot. They need 70 parking spots, which could well go underground. Um, so I've encouraged the second party to come forward. They've indicated, again, nothing in writing. Um, they've indicated they really weren't interested in coming to admin as, as the proper procedure is that it goes to admin. So right now, there's a bona fide developer uh, with plans, who has engaged planning and development, who has engaged administration through the proper channels. So I would be prepared to move forward with a recommendation that council approve the disposal of plan 4629 block BG, lot A roll 6600007, commonly known as 5006 Center Avenue. Um, through a, what would the final part of that be through a negotiated through a negotiated sale with the prospective uh, prospective be bidder current bidder private party negotiated is private what they negotiated there we go that's what I was I, think. I, I was trying to figure that out and of course the pros, uh, proceeds of which shall be allocated to the capital asset lifestyle or lifestyle life cycle management the land management reserve. Okay, so if, we, I, if I could just add, add to my motion, Madam Chair, do you want me to hold? Go up? ahead. No, go ahead. It's yours. All right. Uh, again, this is this is um, uh, this current developer is building the same project in Wetaskiwin. I've asked where are the doctors from their family members. I've asked where are the pharmacists, their family members. Uh, originally, being um, again very serious people, and they have engaged planning and development, and this project would move. Uh, would be a beacon of uh, stability for the community that we've invested $25 million plus in. Um, one of the other options, one of the other reasons why it would be nice to move the property is because of the liabilities to for a county to take those two buildings down. Originally, we put $20,000 into it, and Mr. Honesty found that that was probably very insufficient to the amount that we would need to pay as a county to clean that up before we move forward. So it's moving that responsibility on to this owner uh, through negotiations. And it's also providing a prime piece of real estate that's sat since 2007 into a, a development, which in my opinion will kickstart many other um, housing projects, um, businesses that can continue to go. Uh, so it might be that turning point that we've all been looking for. Okay, thank you. Um, I heard from the county manager that this is within our policy. It is just another way of disposing of land. Um, it has been sitting vacant for a while with a for sale sign with, with not a lot of interest on it. So um, that's just a comment. Any further comments, questions or debate on the motion? <clears throat> 
Go ahead, Councillor Scobie. By doing this, uh, working on a private sale, uh, that wouldn't eliminate other people from stepping forward and trying to deal on it also, would it? Mr. This Coleman? isn't restricting it to a single sale, would it be? Yes, this would be negotiating with the current offer we have. Uh, so we wouldn't entertain other offers at this time. If if the negotiation fell through, then then we'd come back to council. Okay. And my understanding, Mr. Coleman, that there was an offer made into the county. Is yes. that correct, Mr. Correct. Nett? Received it last Friday. Received on Friday. Okay, thank you. Councilor Smith. Of course, the final decision again will come back to council after negotiate if there is a negotiated sale. So we'll have that's, another chance to look at a final yep. agreement if that's, and then at that time, make a final decision if the sale is right. Thank you. No, go ahead, Councilor Verdi. <clears throat> Just wanted to clarify that this parcel has been sitting for sale vacant for quite some time with a lot of opportunity for other developers to come forward and put uh, a plan forward to administration. Is that correct? This property has been sitting unutilized for a significant period of time. It has not been posted as for sale. There's uh, another property in New Sarapta that has been posted. This one has not ever been posted for a point of clarification. So if I was a prospective home, wanted to build a house or something, I wouldn't have known that was actually an option. If I would have driven through the hamlet of New Sarapta, is that correct? There would be no sale sign on it. There is no for sale sign on that property. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Councillor Lewis. Thank you for clarification. How did this uh, potential buyer come to the knowledge that it's that it's available from the county for purchase? They came to awareness through various contacts and that obviously the, the land shows that it's in Leduc County's name. And so they took initiative to inquire after it. Like that happens often in for county owned land. Councillor Verdi. I think the initiative shows something. I think that they were going above and beyond to actually figure out what's going on and add value and investment dollars to the to the new Sarepta community. So um while it's interesting that it was not posted for sale, it shows that this developer is serious, uh, just as a comment. Okay, thank you. Councillor Lewis? Uh, I will support Councillor Smith's motion today. I think this is great news for New Sarepta to see uh, investment coming in into the area that we've put a lot of time and effort and money into. Um, this, is, this is fantastic for uh, all of the community on the East End for what's going to come. Thank you. So in listening to debate today, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with Councillor um, Smith as well. I mean, the developer may choose to not put in what they've already said they're going to put in, but at the very least, the county will not receive anything less than fair market value for that piece of land. And it also takes the responsibility of any kind of cleanup on that piece of land um, out of the, uh, hands for lack of better term of our taxpayers and into a private owner. So any other comments or questions? Seeing none, gonna call the question, all in favor? It's unanimous. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bernand. Thank you very Welcome much. Welcome to year six. Uh, 5C1 uh, Warburg Fire Service Agreement. Madam Mayor and Council, I was before you in June where uh, we made the commitment to develop a, an agreement with to uh, take over pro provision of fire services for Warburg District formally. Uh, after 38 months of negotiations attended by 38 months uh, by yourselves. Of like 39. Detailed <laughs> negotiations. We have today a general conveyance release which will uh provide the time from signing until uh when the agreement takes effect and we do have the agreement after that which uh we're setting as january 1st of 2024 for a four-year agreement uh the hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars involved here 
uh, is to purchase the uh, whatever assets are of Warburg's now. And so they will be claiming that in four years of free fire service delivery, after which the $30,000 annual contribution plus a uh, consumer price index will uh, kick in. And uh, basically at the end of four years, any renegotiation, which has to be finalized, updated. Okay. Thank you for that. That is great news. Um, um, on behalf of council, um, thank you to you and all of administration for working so hard to support the committee over the 38 months of negotiation. Uh, we, we learned a lot about uh, perspectives, but most importantly, both ourselves and the village of Warburg, uh, number one concern was the safety of both their residents and our residents out in the area. Uh, myself and Councillor Belazer had the opportunity to attend the Warburg uh, Firefighters um, Awards on, I believe it was Saturday night. Saturday, yeah. And um, it, was, it was great to be able to think that we will now have Leduc County coverage uh, from a new station in New Sarepta all the way through to our new uh, 24 station at the airport and then out into Warburg. And what that will do is provide that consistency for yourself and your staff, consistent training opportunities, uh, like we saw with uh, our pl platoon chief being able to move up through the ranks. So it is really a win-win and ensures that both our firefighters and um, our residents all are being uh, treated with the same level of safety um, and following the same types of expectations uh, from uh, the east to the west. So for me, this is a great, great news story. Uh, I'd be happy to move the recommendation and then open uh, the, the floor for any other comments. So I'll move that Leduc County Council approve the execution of the conveyance release agreement and the fire service agreement, which will see Leduc County assume full operation and ownership of Warburg Fire Station assets and services. Councillor Smith. It is a good news story. And again, we made a commitment when we didn't sign up uh, for LERFs with the city of Leduc. Uh, and we made a choice at that time that our fire department is second to none and we have moved forward. This is one of the final and last, uh, I guess, agreements that we need to have that consistent safety. You don't need to live in Warburg to benefit from this. Our family members traveling through the Warburg area that may need emergency services, uh, or they may be traveling uh, down Highway 21 in Ladue County. We can count on our professional staff. We can count on our training and safety for family, friends, um, workers, anybody that engages with Ladue County. So I'll definitely be supporting the recommendation after 38.6 hard months of negotiation. I think the deal is good for Warburg and the residents and people outside of Ladue County that may uh, be touched by the Warburg Fire Service area. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? I am seeing none. All in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your support. And again, thank you very much for all your hard work and supporting the committee. On to Ms. Klamosko, 5D1, which is Proclamation of Rail Safety Week. Thank you. Today we have a recommendation in front of council to consider uh, the approval of a uh, week for rail safety week from September 18th to 24, 2023. We did receive a request from CN. Uh, and so in the background of the report, it speaks from some of the letter that we received from CN. So it speaks to that every year more than 2,100 North Americans are killed or seriously injured because of unsafe behavior around tracks and trains, and that by adopting the attached draft proclamation, uh, Leduc County can help raise awareness for rail safety in our community. So with that, I would turn it over to Council to discuss the proclamation of safety, rail safety weeks, sorry. You're looking for someone to perhaps move the recommendation for Rail Safety Week. Councillor Smith. We'll move the recommendation and then I will hand the proclamation off to your capable hands of 
reading, reading through. Administration uh, uh, received a request from CN Rail with the information provided below the council proclaimed the week of September 18 to September 24, 2023 as Rail Safety Week in Ladue County, Alberta. Thank you. Any comments, questions, or debate? Funny, yes, I do have one. Yes. Um, I do have the only sea and rail line that runs through. It runs through Luma. It runs through New Sarepta. Um, and I am happy to see in this that at CN, they aspire to zero, zero fatalities, zero serious injuries, and zero harm. However, over the last couple of years, we've had an accident in New Sarepta and a fatality <laughs> on Highway 21. So we look forward to further safety measures by them and the proclamation again hopefully will array, raise awareness that we all need to to know what's coming down the tracks because we don't have arms we have the flashing lights yet we still get into uh unfortunate incidents and accidents so this is a good week to to bring forward awareness hey any other comments or questions on the motion i am seeing none i will call the question all in favor it is unanimous, and I will read out our proclamation uh, for Rail Safety Week to be held across Canada from September 18 to 24, 2023, whereas 232 railway crossing and trespassing incidents occurred in Canada in 2023, resulting in 66 avoidable fatalities and 43 avoidable serious injuries, and whereas educating and informing of the public about rail safety reminding the public that railway right-of-ways are private property, enhancing public awareness of the dangers associated with highway rail grade crossings, ensuring pedestrians and motorists are looking and listening while near railways and obeying established traffic laws will reduce the number of avoidable fatalities and injuries uh, caused by incidents involving trains and citizens. And whereas, Operation Lifesaver is a public-private partnership whose aim is to work with the public, rail industry, governments, police services, media, and others to raise all rail safety awareness. And whereas CN has requested Leduc County Council adopt this resolution in support of its ongoing efforts to raise awareness, save lives, and prevent injuries in communities, including our municipality. On behalf of Council, I, Mayor Tani DeBlanco of Leduc County, do hereby proclaim the week of September 18 to 24, 2023, to be Rail Safety Week in Leduc County. Thank you. Ms. Klamosko, on to 5D2, which is 2022 to 2025 Leduc County Strategic Plan, 2023 and 2024 priorities. Thank you. So the next recommendation in front of Council for your consideration is that Council adopt the 2022-2025 Strategic Plan uh, revised August 2023. So every year, Council updates the high priority strategies in their strategic plan. So it was a new section that was added in the 2022 to 2025 strategic plan. And on June 22nd and July 11th of this year, there were two workshops facilitated with Council to provide your feedback on those high priority goals and strategies and success measures for 2023, 2024. And based on that feedback, we have uh, made amendments to the strategic plan. And so the various changes that have been made are that I will just show on the screen. So on page 62 of your council package, uh, we've just made a minor change at the bottom of the page to indicate that revised date so that there's some awareness when you look at the strategic plan, if it's the most recent document. Uh, the table of contents on page 64 has changed slightly to um, update the page six to 2023, 2024 priorities and to have continuity between the various versions of this document, we have moved the 2022, 2023 priorities to an appendix so that we're able to see as we go through this term of this strategic plan that we can actually see everything within the document still as it evolves through time. Then on the next uh, page, there was an addition to having uh, Councillor Verdi's picture for Division 3 
given our by-election. And then the final changes were within uh, page 67 of your package, which just brings in 2023 to 2024 priorities. Uh, there's goals, strategies, and success measures that have been added. So with that, uh, I would turn it to council to discuss the adoption of the revised strategic plan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Klamosko. Um, and again, uh, to you and your staff, thank you for uh, putting aside a workshop morning where council had the opportunity to review this. Uh, and we had quite the robust discussion um, about what each of the goals and priorities or and sorry, strategies actually meant. Um, which led us to the uh, strategies that are there as well as the success measures. Uh, with that, I will open up for any other comments, questions, or go ahead, Councillor Smith. If I could draw your attention to page 72 in the package, Appendix A, and again, these were comments that I did bring up in the strategic plan, and I thought it was an opportunity uh, just to change a little bit, one of the goals, the top goal is an engaged community, which um, in the high priority strategy means to increase communication with residents. And then the bottom is an engaged community. So they're both kind of the same words. I guess there's an explanation that it's a high priority strategy. The second engaged community we're looking to doing out of the four goals is to further develop the community event strategy. I was wondering if the first goal instead of being an engaged community, could be an informed community and an engaged community could be part of the other. I'm just wondering why we have to have an engaged community in both when our goal in the first one could be probably facilitated by an informed community. And that may not be the right word, but engaged in goal one and engaged in goal four seems to be somewhat redundant to me and a, a bit of a problem explaining. So that was one of the one of the, and I just have, if I could, uh, Mayor, one other comment, and I'm I'm really happy with the work that you've done and you've reviewed it, which again, I'm so happy that the strategic plan is the guiding principle that administration uses uh, in everything they bring back to council. Uh, I just wanted to make again on page 69, the deep community connections, and I'll go to the goals 1.4, um, promote the historic roots of Leduc County. And again, as we do that, I would hope with truth and reconciliation that we go a little further back than just the settlement of the Europeans to where the area I live is so rich and historic to the Beaver Hills. And I'll be talking about that when we work on our rec strategy coming up. But that area has uh, for a long time been hunting grounds. Um, the Northwest Mounted Police have been set up through there, through the Tollfield area, the Beaver Hills, the Strathcona Cooking Lake, which is really connected. So I hope we go a little bit deeper in the name of truth and reconciliation to recognize the, the first peoples um, that that were there. In fact, um, my family members being Métis out of Division I um, did a lot of buffalo hunting in that area. And there's a lot of the, my ancestors, as we like to call them, that actually reside in the ground uh, in that area now. So again, thank you for the work. Let's take this opportunity to expand. And I appeal to you to change one of the engaged to something that just explains an informed community. Thank you for that. Okay, Mr. Mosco. So I just wanted to highlight uh, the reason why that create engaged community is repeated twice on that one appendix is because um, within the on page 71, we have the strong leadership pillar within the strategic plan. And the major goal was to create an engaged community. What that um, 2022 to 2023 table was showing was there was two specific strategies that council wanted us to focus on to create the engaged community to tie to this specific goal on page 71. So that is why it's it's those that goal is repeated twice within that appendix. So then when you look at this, these were the two strategies within 2022 and 2023 that council had directed administration to pursue to advance the engaged community goal specifically. For 2023-2024. This so one these is are our so move ahead goals on page uh, 67. Yes, the ones, uh, that you referred to Councillor Smith were the ones that we were moving up until this time. Okay. So the next steps, uh, once 
council has um, discussed and move forward with the approval potentially of this draft strategic plan would be to um, have new strategic plans printed as well as posting on the website. Um, and just uh, not, I guess it's not a reminder, but we will continue to work on, of course, all areas. These are the areas that council during our uh, workshop opportunity built, uh, felt were the, the, the top, the highest priority ones, the um, ones we wanted to work on. I just wanna make a comment about maintain a safe county. Council spoke a lot on this and we talked a lot about rural crime. We talked about uh, those types of issues and we realized that I actually believe it was it was uh, Councillor Scobie who reminded us that really that's out of our scope of influence. We can influence uh, the RCMP to to work. We can give feedback to their uh, plans and reports, but we really don't direct them. What we can do is ensure that our roads are safe to ensure that our, our, our intersections are safe. So when it says maintain a safe county, we'll continue to work with the RCMP and our community peace officers. Uh, but this was really directly around how do we make sure that our roads are safe for people uh, to who are moving through or working and living here as well. So just a, a little clarification there and a reminder that we're doing everything else. We haven't stopped doing um, parks and rec and things like that, Dean. We're still doing all of that, but these are our, our real high priority areas that we want to hit uh, for 23-24, so. Looking for uh, someone to move the recommendation or put another recommendation on the floor. Councillor Lewis. I'd be happy to move the recommendation that council adopt the 2022 to 2025 strategic plan revised August, 2023. Okay, thank you. Comments, questions? All in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you very much. On to 5D3, which is our quarter two reporting. Ms. Klamosko and Ms. Weiss has come forward. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. So the next report we have for council's consideration is that council accept the report and attachments as information for quarter two 2023 reporting ending June 30th, 2023. So corporate reporting provides council and the public with progress update on our various projects and programs. And this reporting demonstrates our commitment to achieving positive results and helps foster open and transparent communication. So going um, forward through the report, we have um, county highlights documents. So a lot of work occurred in Q2. So we had a fairly extensive list of county highlights of the various um, programs, initiatives, things completed by various departments across the organization. So then moving forward through the county highlights document, we ha then had our tables relating to Yes. Ask a question, please, on Absolutely. the Q2 highlights, and mm -hmm. it will probably come up later, but it is really about fire. It said 2,555 hours controlling fires in May alone. Um, I understand that there was an opportunity to apply back to the government for a grant to cover that. Were we able to do that? And do we know if we are receiving any money back from the government for uh, that unprecedented wildfire fighting? Uh, through the chair, uh, we are in the process of applying for that grant. Uh, Finance and fire services are working quite closely with the province of Alberta to apply for the disaster recovery program. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Good news. Thank you. Are there any other questions and on any other highlights on this, these two pages? Okay. So then going, we have the charts just outlining at the highest level of the revenue and expenditures in the organization as of June 30th. We also then move into some updates on our health and safety within the organization. So there's some statistics there as well for council and the public's information. Moving to the next page, we have the real estate market activity in Q2. So we had 36 
vacant lot sales and 47 improved lot sales within the quarter. Then moving to the next page, we've just provided a page of highlights on development that is occurring and the status of, of where those developments are at as of June 30th. And uh, just a question, as we look at, as buildings are built, we look at the July 1st completion and then that's the day at which we decide what their assessment will be, correct? If, we're, if it's an unfinished building? Yes. Yes, so. Well, Ms. Bernand is there. So if we take a look at a, a building that's being um, Storage Vault Canada, I see is just construction has started. So when we do an assessment for taxation, do we wait until the building is totally completed before we begin the assessment for taxation? No, we are we we assess it progressively. And the valuation date is July 1st, but the condition date is December 31st. Okay. So however long, however far along a building is as of December 31st for next year. For next year. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions on um, the projects, development highlights? Okay. So the next page provides some statistics on uh, various permits and the status at Q2. We also have a box on our whistleblower complaint line and there is no complaints received in Q2 nor in 2023. The next page we have the graph that just demonstrates how much debt Leduc County currently ho holds in comparison to what our debt limit available is. And then the Next pages within uh, the county highlights document have all of the information related to our strategic plan and the various actions that have taken place as of June 30th, 2023. Are there any questions on any of those pages? I don't have a question. I just want to uh, commend uh, Parks and Rec around engaged community. Heard very, very positive <clears throat> feedback for um, you know, the ice cream socials, the drive-ins. Um, I was able to attend both of the Leduc County days. And uh, unfortunately the one at Rowley View was during the first monsoon um, of, of June, I believe it was. But people who showed up, uh, our staff did a phenomenal job, phenomenal job about talking about what they did in their, in their department. They had giveaways for people. It was, there was a great feeling and I'm hoping we continue this. Uh, next year because it it was a they were both wonderful wonderful opportunities for residents to come out and learn about what their departments do and sometimes meet the person that you maybe have talked to for four times on the phone or whatever else so just uh thank you for that um shout out to parks and rec thank you so going to page 87 of your agenda package we have the report for on the corporate plan. So we have the work coming out of the county manager's office and the various deliverables. Are there any questions on anything within the corporate plan or the county manager's office financial report? That's on page 94. Questions? Seeing none. Okay. So then now we'll move into all of the departmental quarterly reports. So for every department, we have um, their operational plan and status updates on all the various initiatives that they had committed to do in 2023, and then as well as their financial report for quarter two. So moving first to administration on page 96, um, we have assessment services on page 96, corporate services on page 100, and finance on page 108. Are there any questions for um, any of our management team for administration? I am seeing none, Ms. Kamasko. Okay. So then moving to agricultural services on page 114. Not seeing any questions. And if at any time I go too quickly, we can always go back if a question 
arises. Um, I just a uh, general question, and I'm just scribing to or scrolling to get there. Where were we with uh, club route and club route inspections this year? I know that it was, you know, there was nothing coming up until the middle of June, and then it probably was a flush. And whether that impacted um, the development of club route or not, and we ended up in the same place, Mr. Broadman. Yeah, um, and a more extensive report will be coming to uh, Ag Service Board um, in September, looking at kind of what we've yep. seen to date. So um, early indications are, yeah, we have we have club root, um, obviously managed well by most producers. However, there's going to be areas where we need to take action through the Agricultural Pest Act. Um, however, you know, given given the circumstances, given the year, uh, we're still in a pretty good position in our municipality. Thank you, Councillor uh, Belazer. Yeah, on that club route, I, I don't know if you've been listening to CFCW on the, the report at noon. They did an extensive follow-up on club route and they found that for some reason they found Duke County in Alberta has, has got the most club route. I don't know if they've been living in a, a dream or what, but uh, they said now it's starting to move across the province. Uh, I th they should have been checking with yourself and Aaron for the longest time. I think this is information that's been out there for years. Well, and again, um, if you actually are looking for it, you'll find it and which we do and we report on it. So I guess it probably looks like we have the most, but if you're not looking for it, it doesn't mean it's not there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So the next report in your package is enforcement services on page 122. All right, and then moving on to engineering on page 131. Next, we have family and community support services on page 138. Next department is fire services on page 144. Um, if I may, um, Ms. Klamosko, um, just a quick update on our full-time temporary um, platoon here, as well as when we think we'll be into the new building at the airport. Both good news stories, so. I'm not, uh, you're all about good news today, Chief. As always, uh, Madam Mayor and Council. So if you've driven by the Costco lately, you'll see that all the tip up walls are up on the building as of last week. They're working on the roof now. We're anticipating it'll be uh, right close to Christmas, but we expect to be in the building by, you know, at January. the very latest mid January, but hopefully mid December. Uh, we have, uh, put out job offers for the balance of the three shifts will be starting in November with their onboarding uh, okay. ahead of them going on shift by mid-December in anticipation or ahead of the contract ending uh, with the airport January 1st, 2024. So that truck that's currently providing the full-time service through the airport on the contract is internalized effective January 1st. Um, and when we look at uh, filling those positions, are we looking internal and external? Do, or will our internal firefighters have an opportunity? Yeah, I think out of the 15 positions, I think eight or 10 were internal. Sorry. Oh, great. Great. Nice to hear that. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, he's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> so the next on page 152 is a financial report for legislative. No questions there. We have Parks and Recreation on page 153. Next. I have a question. I see a big red bar by campground and, and red usually isn't a good sign. I heard that today. Um, <laughs> is that because we haven't, um, right there, yeah, right there, go back. <laughs> says minus 
and just to clarify, it's just how it's recorded here, but it's actually a good news story. Our it revenues is. are ahead. It's just how how they report it through their their reporting. But uh, it's, because we it's wait a, until the end and then we put all the money in, or no, it's how it's how they. Tasha, maybe you'll speak to it, but it's how they calculate it in their graph as revenue as not a green scenario. So. Okay. Twice, I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> no problem. This one looks funny, uh, primarily because that calculation and that percentage of the Q2 budget is the Q2 year to date. Right. So because that's a negative, see the surplus deficit, I can highlight it on the screen there. Because that's negative, it's showing up. Gotcha. Yeah. Because it is just Q2. Yes. Good recovery, Mr. Honesty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then going uh, to the next department, planning and development on page 160. I have a, a bit of a general question, um, and it's about the land use bylaw update. Uh, question for Mr. Bain. We are doing that mostly internally are we able are is your staff managing the additional because previously we we might have hired a consultant to do that um the workflow for getting this done internally is being managed all right because it's it's turning out great yes correct and thank you for that madam chair it is being managed i would say quite well with our with our in-house resources there are some projects where we've gone out to consulting help uh, for those kinds of projects we chose not to do that here um, we just felt that we had a better understanding of what our challenges are in Ladue County in terms of land use regulation. So we've gone that route. It's been working well. We have two staff deployed full time in that project. Um, and we've been getting some outside help on permitting to help that flow and keep timelines on, uh, on target there. So I say all is well. And uh, I was able to attend both of your open houses um, and they seem to have been well attended. Is that what you're finding? Madam Chair, we've had two of the four, uh, one in June, one in August. Uh, the first one, we had 72 attendees. The second one, or we had 70, I'm sorry. The second one, we had 52, uh, well above expectations. Um, it wouldn't be uncommon to get single digit numbers for some of these meetings. So there's interest and it seems like there's a good reaction to the information we're putting out so far and we are getting good feedback. And that probably ties into the new way we're reaching out to people, the road signs. We're, we're really hitting this with as much communication as we possibly can. We've gone far and wide on the notification, including the roadside signs. And a lot of people actually mention the roadside signs as how they became aware of the event. So easy, right? They work very well. Yes. All right. Well, thank you for that. And uh, thanks to your staff for their hard work on that. Thank you, Madam Chair. So the next report, we have a financial report for public transit on page 170. And then moving into page 172, we have road operations. Road operations. And if there's no questions there, we'll move. Oh, yeah. On. It's not a question. But uh, following the, and for, for us, I know it was more out east, but following about the six inches of rain we got in three days in June when we finally got rain, um, our roads held up absolutely remarkably uh, well. Generally, they would have been rutted and, and quite difficult to get down. I didn't have a complaint. Um, and I just wanted to mention that as kudos. I know that um, Mr. Broadman has put lots of time into supervising his people, providing training, uh, work with his uh, foreman to ensure that the roads are consistent across the county. And at least from Division 5, you know, the odd complaint, but overall probably some of the best roads uh, with some bad weather that I have seen in many, many years. So just uh, thank you for all your hard work on that. It's usually not a, a thankful job. Councillor Belazer said he had two calls one week. One said, where's the grader? And the other one said, why are you grading so much on the same road? So, so, so we, we know we have different perspectives on how we think we should maintain our roads. But uh, I, I know that they're in great shape. I know that yourself and, and the county manager did a road tour. And um, so thank you to you and your, your staff for that. 
Thank you. So the next uh, department reports are for utilities on page 180. So that includes water distribution, wastewater collection, and waste management. Councillor Belazer. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to speak a bit to waste management. For those who don't know, there was a contract uh, site operations for the Duke Regional Landfill. RFP came through. Uh, we no longer have GFL. We have Whistle Waste Solutions, which is a division of 360 solutions. Does anybody know who invited Whistle is and who is 360? Oh, Salish. Madam Chair. Um... Yeah, grab a chair. Uh... The first name, um, I'm not sure, but um, E360 is uh, the company. I think uh, they are uh, out from the east and they're based out uh, their Their Alberta operation is uh, operated from Red Deer, but uh, they're all over, I guess, now. They're trying to um, um, cope up, uh, uh, do a kind of like a, um, merger with uh, the smaller companies and trying to actually get their roots in Alberta. Okay, just to follow up on that, this came through from Mike Peters. Now, these folks were awarded the contract from January 2024 to December 2033. That's a long time to award a contract for somebody we really don't know. Did we have any say to this as the Duke County? I'll, I'll speak to that uh, because it's a commission. We, as our voting members on the commission uh, speak for Leduc County. So uh, the county itself as administration advise you, but uh, um, it's the vote of the commission that uh, determines okay. outcomes. So. Okay. Um, I have a question, Ms. Klamosko, uh, page 182 of 204. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to see that the Wildland Meadows wastewater treatment um has been awarded and construction is underway do we know if it'll be done in this construction season I, I, and i'm not sure if anyone here oh i'm seeing a nod yes oh, sorry uh, um, yeah. Yeah. Madam Chair, yes they're working on it uh there have been some challenges with the rain uh however it, it's uh we're working on on this one and the plan is to get it done this year okay and that would be good news, I assume, for your residents, Councillor Smith. If I could make a comment, uh, the contractor out there has been going door to door and informing people with what's going on. So being extremely close to it, uh, they said rain has been a challenge, but they have set their date as September 15th. Uh, today, I noticed another 647 trucks went by, so that's good to, <laughs> to know. But again, he has been really good with going to all the neighbors, talking about road conditions, talking about project rain delays. So it is a good news. And again, you know, weather permitting, um, I would anticipate them being out of there by September 15th, according to the contractor's information to local residents, including myself. And if I could then, uh, Councillor Smith, then that means that those residents will no longer have to do the pump and haul, that their sewage will be managed on site as was promised them many, many years ago. Is that correct? And that's correct. Those four sewer trucks a day will stop as well as the gravel trucks in a very short term with what's going on. And again, the the treated water will go back into the wetland where it should be not being hauled to Nisku, piped to the North Saskatchewan River and dumped in. So it's a, it's a really great pilot project moving forward of how we manage some of our utilities in Ladue County. Thank you. Thank you. So the next uh, two reports are fiscal services and recreation expenditures. So those are on page 189 and 191 of your package. And then moving forward, we have on page 192. May, yes. Page 190, does it say we we, we made $528,000 in interest? Uh, Madam Mayor, yes, that is what we have deposited into our account to June 30th of 2023. Thank you to whoever decided that having a better investment strategy is what the county needed to do. That is, for lack of a better term, free money that we can reinvest uh, for the taxpayers in the county. Thank you. Thank you. So moving to page 192, we have 
a summary document just with our 2023 major project and capital project plans. So it just speaks to projects that have been completed and work in progress for both of those plans consolidated together. So we'll go into more detail um, into the next pages. So we're going to page 194. This is specifically the summary for major project plan. So again, it's just breaking it down into the various categories of completed and work in progress and the funding sources utilized for that plan. And then going to page 196 is the detailed project list. And then there is a status and then a status update on all of the projects within our major project plan in 2023. Are there any questions on any of the status updates or any projects that are being done under the major project plan? Um, being the chatty Kathy today, uh, bottom of page 196, the labor force analysis hasn't started. Uh, are, are we, is it our intent to work perhaps with Edmonton Global or someone else? I mean, one of the things we continue to hear from business is we, we don't, we don't have the labor force that we need. Mr. Grayson. Thank you, madam. Um, yeah, this activity hasn't been started yet. We are planning a activity here in the fall, um, around a bit of a, uh, session on workforce uh, and the region. We're going to be working with Edmonton Global and Alberta Invest. The uh, situation is such that there's a number of agencies that appear to be working on this. And so rather than duplicating or spending $100,000 on a report that may provide us information, we've delayed it to this point and uh, we'll make a decision here in the coming weeks, months. So. Okay. Thank you. And then just one more, if I can, um, reading why we don't have the NISCU salt shed overhead door. Um, it looks like it's probably two things, an inflationary issue and perhaps even a supply chain. I don't know. I mean, are we able to, are we at risk to not have them for this winter season, Mr. Broadbent? Or Yeah, we will not have it for this year. Um, the cost is incredibly more than what we had anticipated this calendar year. So we might have to revisit it in budget or, okay, thank you. Any other questions on any of these projects? All right, going to the next page we have, if there's any um, on these, the second page of projects for major projects. If not, we'll move right to the capital project plan. So on page 198, again, the summary of our capital project plan, what has been completed uh, to date and what remains work in progress. And then we have the detailed listing of all the various projects. And I, there is a more detailed summary for roads and bridges that we will go to after um, this summary document. Are there any questions on projects that are not road or bridges in this document on page 199? Back to Mr. Broadbent, the motor grader replacement, these are ones we ordered in 2023 because we're looking at no, 2022. It says anticipated delivery Just, 2024. Oh yeah, no, 2023. 2023 would we have ordered. So yeah. we're we're a year behind in delivery. For sure. yeah. um, we, we have received the two from 2022. Okay. 2022 capital. Um, approved purchases of the two, they are they've been received and they are within our fleet. Do, do you believe that this is just the, going to be the way of the future? Now we we have to order two years ahead of time, or yes, for okay. the time. <laughs> I like that quick answer. No beating around the bush. The the supply chain the the for parts and blades and tires and all of those kind of things is is you know is okay like that type of stuff. The maintenance supply chain, however, um, big products like this are in the queue, right? Just in the queue. 
It so, is what it is, and we'll learn from that. Ms. Moscow. So just to add to that, um, this is something that we've been discussing within our Asset Management Committee, recognizing that we are seeing significant delays uh, for some of these major purchases where we used to be able to receive them within the calendar year when the order was placed. So when we are looking at our asset replacement schedule, we are going to be looking at proactively ordering equipment that we are expecting to have to replace a year out, 18 months out. So we're looking at how we're going to do that within our budget. So uh, most likely what we're thinking is that we would have our typical capital project plan like you've seen normally, but then we would have almost a secondary um, recommendation to approve um, moving forward on the purchase of equipment that we've deemed that we want to have in place in future years um, to proactively order things that are difficult to receive. Right. Sounds like we have that in hand and we've learned from that. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions on any capital project um, capital projects before I move on to the road and bridge? Seeing none. All right. So then at the first on page 201, we have the road program. So again, all of the roads that are being worked on this year, all the different initiatives are listed and there is a status update. Are there any questions on any of the road projects? All right, seeing none. Then the next report is the bridge program. Are there any questions on any of the bridge projects? All right, so not seeing any questions on that. We will move to page 203. So we have in the next two documents that are finalizing the package, we have our operating and our capital fund reserve schedules. So in our operating fund reserve schedule, schedule our actual balance um, in operating fund is just over $26.9 million. And in the operating fund reserves, we have just over $22.4 million. So with that, if there's there are no further questions on any of the documents within this extensive package of information, I would go back to the recommendation for council to approve the report as information. Thank you. Any general overall questions or comments? Councillor Smith. I'd like to make a comment. We've asked for these for a while now and they're well informed. And again, they de they're delivered to us at a, enough time to go through and have an examination on them. It also meets the strategic plan, what you like to call an engaged community, me an informed community, that these are online and people can go through some very in-depth information of what we're doing here. So if someone, I don't hear, nobody told me that where do I find it? This, if a resident wanted to sit down and have some very informative reading over an evening, uh, it really shows what we're doing. It shows where we're moving any challenges we have and successes they, they go through. So not only is council benefiting from the work and the numerous managers that are sitting in here today, uh, our general engaged or informed public uh, is the beneficiary of such reports as well. Thank you. Um, thank you for that. I'll make the, put the motion on the floor that we accept the report and attachments as information. Um, and for me and the rest of council, Getting these on a quarterly basis means that when we move into our very long budget deliberations, we have an understanding and a reminder of how we've built to a certain position. And it's a lot easier to move through those kinds of documents. It's one of those areas where I believe um, an educated council is what we are. And we strive hard to keep ourselves informed. Thank you for doing the reports that keep us informed. Um, but it really does make our job a lot easier when we do get into those uh, difficult budget discussions and decisions. Uh, we have a motion on the floor. I see no other hands up. I will call the question. All in favor? That is unanimous. Uh, thank you all for joining us, and I will adjourn at 2.58 p.m. Thank you very much, everyone. And it appears you are my